Hi guys, welcome to another fun craft with Miss Sarah. Today you can see I've got my leprechauns on and we're gonna be making a leprechaun. So fun! So for this craft, we're gonna need some paper. So I have here some white paper, green paper, um, black paper, yellow paper. Um, if you don't have construction paper, you can use regular white paper and just color it for the different colors that you need. That's totally fine. Even if it's lined paper, that's completely okay as well. I'm going to use construction paper just to save a little bit of time. You're going to need some googly eyes. And the ones I'm going to be using today are the 0.6 inches or 15 millimeter each size. You can get these at different craft stores for relatively inexpensive. But if you don't have googly eyes, that's okay. Um, you can use a marker or a dark crayon. You're also going to want a pencil in addition to your marker or dark crayon. And I recommend one with a good eraser just in case you make a line that you don't like and you need to erase it. You're also going to need a crayon in a pink color because we want to give his little cheeks a little bit of that pink, um, kind of rosy look. So you want to make sure you have a pink crayon for that. You're also going to need a glue stick or you can use regular liquid glue if you want. For this craft though, I find a glue stick works just fine. You're also going to want a good pair of scissors. So I've got my good pair here. And most importantly, for his beard, you're going to want to use paint. So I'm going to be using this acrylic paint in this kind of orange color. And for your paintbrush, we're going to be using a fork. So I kind of borrowed this from our library staff kitchen. And those are pretty much all the materials that you're going to want to make sure you have on hand to do this craft. And I also recommend having some newspaper or something that can kind of um, protect the surface that you're going to be working on. The good thing about using paint, acrylic paint, is that it's a soap and water cleanup. So even if you get it on a surface, you can usually just clean it up with a little bit of soap and water. But markers... <laughs> Sometimes we'll leave a mark. So I, that's why I always recommend when you're crafting to make sure to cover your surface um, with something to protect it, okay? So I'm gonna let you go ahead and gather up all of those materials and I'll see you in the next segment when we'll get started making the craft. See you in a bit. Hi guys. So we're gonna get started with our leprechaun. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is make his face shape. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to make a big upside down U, kind of in the middle of the paper. I'm just going to kind of sketch it out with my pencil, with my good eraser, so that in case I make a mistake, I can just kind of erase that real quick. It does not need to be perfect, you just want kind of a basic shape. So you should have something that looks kind of like that, okay? Now, I'm going to draw some ears just to kind of give me that little guideline. And again, this does not have to be perfect. This is just kind of giving you like a basic idea. So something kind of like that with the ears, okay? Now, I know that's his basic face shape. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my dark marker and I'm gonna go ahead and make his nose. I know I'm gonna want his nose probably about here. So I'm gonna make an upside down U right there for his little nose. And then I'm going to make a smile. I'm gonna give him a little mouth right there. And I always like to give him little cheeks. So you should have something that looks kind of like that. You've got your face outline in pencil, and then you've got your nose and your smile and your dark marker. Now we need our paint. So I'm going to use a plastic plate I find works the best, one of those little dessert plates. And then we're going to squirt some paint on there. You can see I was working earlier on my example. So we've got our paint on there, and I'm going to use my fork that I was using earlier. So. The great thing about this is that you can kind of put it along the tines. These little pokey things are called the tines. And then I recommend that you kind of tap it this way a little bit to get off the excess. The technique that we're going to be using is press and lift. You might want to hold your paper as you do this. So I'm going to take my fork and I'm going to start with his beard coming this way. So I'm going to press and lift. 
Press and lift. Press and lift. Press and lift. So now I'm going to get a little bit more paint and start on the other side. And again, I'm just going to lightly tap in case there's some excess that I don't want. I'm going to turn my paper as I go, and I'm going to try to kind of match that angle. So I'm going to press and lift. Press and lift. Press and lift. Press and lift. So you can see I've got kind of a kind of a sight, a start of a beard along his sides there. Okay, now I'm going to tap this again. And I'm very, very carefully going to kind of fill in a little bit closer to his mouth. So I'm going to press and lift, press and lift, press and lift. We're basically going to follow the line that we made with our pencil all the way around his face, just to kind of get the beginning of that beard outline. That's really what we're shooting for here. We just want to get that beard kind of started, filled in. Now from there, we can go ahead and start filling it out down towards the paper. I think I want to kind of bring it mine down a little bit. I want him to have a really full beard because if you've ever seen pictures of leprechauns in picture books, like in our story time for St. Patrick's Day, you might have noticed that they tend to have pretty full beards. So I want to be sure. Leprechauns are what they call fae, fae folk, and they are ageless. They live for a super long time and it's very difficult to tell their age because they, they look, some of them look very, very young, and they're over 100 years old. So that's the fae folk for you. All right, I just want to keep making sure I've got my beard kind of filled in here. And you can see I'm doing press and lift, press and lift. That is what I'm doing just very carefully. And it kind of helps if you hold your paper a little bit too. I noticed sometimes um, when I was making this example that I had a lot of um, flicking in my face area. And if that happens to you, that's okay. You won't really see it from a distance. But if you want to go back and fix it, you're welcome to do that. Um, and the way you would fix it is basically just starting over. <laughs> so um, that's why it's really careful. You want to be really careful because once the paint is on the paper, you're not getting it off. Now we've already got all of our beard the way we want. I like the way that that looks. So you just keep going until your beard is filled in to the way that you like. And what I'm gonna do now is give him some hair going right across this top part. And I'm just gonna do it straight across. I'm gonna be focusing more on just the tines part. So I'm just going to kind of press it here and there. And it doesn't even matter if it's not if it's not, you know, real dark, that's totally fine. You really don't need it very dark for this part because it's going to be covered up mostly with the hat that he's going to wear. So it's okay if you don't get it perfect. And if you feel like you need to kind of wiggle around in your paint a little, that's fine too. You might want to go crossways just to kind of fill it in a little bit more if you want to do that. I'm not going to put a lot there because I know that's where his hat's going to go. Okay, so now I've got something that looks kind of like that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set that paper aside, and what I'm going to do now is work on his hat. So for the hat, I'm going to set my paint aside too. Kind of over there. Okay, so for the hat, what color is the leprechaun hat? Do you know? Usually it is green. Leprechauns come from Ireland and one thing that grows in Ireland very, very strongly is shamrocks, right? Or clovers. So the wearing all the green, that's what they do there to show their Irish pride. So what we're going to start with first is this great piece of green paper that I have. And what I'm going to do is cut, I'm going to kind of look at my picture here and I'm going to cut a piece that kind of goes across. So this is actually kind of a good size. Um, not really sure. That's kind of a good size. You just look at it and decide how far across you want the bill of your hat to go. It should go really from like 
this corner of the top of your line here to this line here. So you made your U shape, you want it at least that wide, but you want to give it a little bit extra. So you, you judge it based on how you drew your U. And I'm going to make a rectangle that's about that wide. So you should have a rectangle that goes from the top of this U line that you drew here to this other line, but give it maybe just a half an inch more on either side. So you should have something that looks kind of like that. And we're going to angle it a little bit because it's just kind of fun. If you don't want to angle it, you don't have to. You can have it going straight, but I'm going to angle mine just a little, just a smidge. Angle it just a smidge there. Okay, and I just realized if I do that, I don't have any hair right here, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Okay, there. Just get a little bit of hair. There. All right. So I'm going to angle it kind of like this. There we go. I feel like that looks better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put my glue, get my glue. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this on there right where I want it. It does not have to be a perfectly straight rectangle, by the way. As you know, I love things that aren't exactly, exactly perfect. I think it gives them character, so I will never, never mind that. I'm going to go ahead and get that how I want it, and then I'm going to press it. Now, for the hat, you're going to want a nice square, and you're going to want it to come in a little bit from there. So I'm going to kind of measure the paper that I have pre-cut here and see which one I like. I think that's a little bit too wide. I may want to go with that size. So you just want something that comes in a little bit on both sides. And you want it to be tall. So we're going to make a good square here. It's up to you how tall you want it to be. But I'm going to go with something that's kind of that size. Okay, there's my hand. Kind of, I don't know, that size. It's up to you. And I'm going to put it right there. There's my leprechaun hat. I like it. Or I might do it that way. Yeah. Now, on any good leprechaun hat, you will always have a strap of leather or velvet going all the way around, usually in the color black. So what I recommend doing is making sure that you have something that is the right width going this way so you want to you want to put your you want to put your hat on the paper here and then you can decide how far up you want it and how far down so i'm going to say i'm probably going to want my paper i know that's my edge and i know i'm probably going to want it like at least to here right and i know that i want right there i'm going to mark that edge so you can kind of see it on your black paper so that you cut the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it. I don't know if you can see that, but I've got it marked there. So I'm going to cut this this top line. I'm going to cut that down to this line, and then I'm going to cut it across. Okay. So that's how I make sure I get my paper just about where I want it. So I've cut that to there, and now I'm going to switch gears and cut that straight across. And if I've done this right, it should fit the base of my square. There I go. Okay. Pretty, pretty close. Ah, oh, there I go. I had to turn it around. I forgot which way I had it going. So you should have something that fits it pretty perfect like that. Okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and glue, or actually before I glue that, now I need to check on my yellow. So I'm going to take my yellow paper with my black strip that I have. I'm going to kind of measure that. Make sure that I have it, you know, as wide as I want. I'm going to start here. And I know that I need it to be at least that wide. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. What we're going to do is cut a square out of that one. So I'm going to grab my scissors. I've got it marked up here. I'm just going to bring it down and across to make a square. Does not have to be perfect. I just want a square. 
All right, there I go. Got a nice little square, nice little rectangle. So that should fit in my black piece. And it should look like that, okay? So let's start with the black piece first. I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue along the bottom of my, my green square for my leprechaun hat. Kind of perfect. Now I'm gonna glue right in the middle. I'll put my yellow square. Kind of perfect. Now I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to draw, or my dark crayon, and I'm going to draw a little square inside of this and color it in just to make it have the appearance that it's like a buckle. And it does not have to be perfect. So, you know, if you don't get the square exactly right, do not worry about it. Again, I'm not looking for perfection, I'm looking for uniqueness and character. And you don't get uniqueness and character if everything is exactly the same. I like that it's different. Embrace the difference. Good thing. Trust me. All right. So now I've got something that looks like that. And I'm going to take this, coming back to my picture here, and glue it right there to make my leprechaun hat. So I'm just going to glue this about halfway up. So that's about how much of it's gonna touch the paper. And there I go. All right. Just make sure you press it down really good so it really, really grabs. So you should have something that looks like that. Now, last two things we need to give our leprechaun are eyes and some rosy, rosy cheeks. And to do that, we'll start with the cheeks. I'm gonna use this pink crayon. You can use whatever color you want. If you have markers, you can use markers. That's totally fine. Keep in mind that if you don't let your paint completely dry, it might still be wet at this point. And I'm kind of rushing this just to kind of show you guys how to do it. So if you wanna set this aside and wait until your paint is completely dry to start these other pieces, I definitely recommend that, okay? Now let's take this crayon and I'm gonna be really, really careful not to touch any of the paint pieces. And right in this little kind of curvy spot is when I'm gonna just make a big circle with my crayon. I'm pressing kind of hard because I wanna be sure that I get that rosy cheeks. Look, so cute. And now I'm gonna take my wiggly eyes. If you don't have um, googly eyes, you can just take your marker and draw circles and you can color in the eyes. You can make them blue or green or whatever color that you want. So I'm gonna pick two of my little googly eyes here. And I'm just going to put some glue on them. These are not self-adhesive ones, unfortunately. You can get ones that are. I did not, so I'm having to put some glue on them myself, which is not a big deal. And this, you could use liquid glue if you want, um, but I have found that glue sticks work pretty good. I'm just gonna press them on there. Just get it on there and press, all right! And once you have that pretty much on there, you've got your eyes and your rosy cheeks, you are done. And there you go. That is your awesome leprechaun craft. Great job. It looks fantastic. So I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you had a good time um, learning about Ireland and leprechauns. I talked a little bit about that. Um, in the story time, I did share with you the correct way to say um, Ireland forever, which is Irene go brach. Irene go brach. Like Ireland, Irene go brach. And it is um, spelled on the flag behind me, if you can see that. This is the correct spelling for that phrase, Irene means Ireland, go means four, 
and brach means until eternity or until the end of time. So that phrase translates into Ireland forever. So around St. Patrick's Day, you may hear a lot of people that have some Irish in them saying that phrase. I have some Irish in me, so I will probably say, I didn't go brach. All right, you guys, I hope you have a really, really great um, St. Patrick's Day and really, really great week. Stay safe, be well, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our Facebook and to the Tulare Public Library YouTube channel where you can find other great story times, crafts, activities, and good stuff. All right, I'll, I'll see you next time, guys, for another great craft. Bye!